swiftly, silently, out of the horizon of community transportation has come a new vehicle, the trackless trolley coach. In every city where it has been placed in operation, it has increased revenue for the operating company by gaining the enthusiastic preference of the riding public. What are the reasons for this remarkable record? Let's look behind the scenes in a typical trolley coach town, where by interview we obtain the opinions of various types of people about this new vehicle, the housewife. Well, I, I don't usually like to give testimonials, but if I were to give one about the trolley coach, I'd probably say what I really think, that... Well, they're so easy to get on because they come right up to the curb. And they're safer for the children for that reason, too. And there's no sickening exhaust smell. And they're not only comfortable to ride on, but they let me live in comfort, too. Because they're so wonderfully quiet, I hardly ever hear them pass the house. The schoolboy. What? The trolley coach? Oh, sure, yeah. Boy, has that all electric wagon got speed. I'll say. Boy, I don't have to get up in the middle of the night now to get to school on time. The businessman. Well, I used to drive my car to the office. But no more fighting through traffic and no more uh, parking lot bills for me since the trolley coach came. Believe me, it's got speed. It brings me right to the entrance of my office and takes me home as fast as I can make it in my own car. And blow hot or blow cold, I know that I can depend upon it to keep on schedule and give me a comfortable ride. The shopman. Well, young fella, take it from me. After a hard day's work in a noisy shop, it's a real treat to ride home on a trolley coach. It takes you there in a hurry and rolls along so smooth you hardly know you're riding. And say, it has enough light I can read my paper by, too. The traffic cop. Well, for myself, I'll say trolley coach has sure got what it takes to keep me from getting great. Keeping rush hour traffic moving downtown here. Faster getaway than anything I ever saw. And a stalled car never gets in the way or ties them up. Swing around just as pretty as you please. I happen to know that the commissioner is as pleased as punch, too, about the way accidents have gone down. People don't have to fight their way to the middle of the street to get a trolley coach. It lets them on and off at the curb. The driver. Why, the trolley coach, it's the best job on wheels. Easy to handle and goes through traffic like nobody's business. It's got more pickup and speed than any bus I ever drove. And extra power, say, with the whole power plant behind you, it's easy to maintain schedule. Rain or shine, uphill or down. It's not hard to give the customers the kind of service the boss wants us to give them with the trolley coach. And that's the kind of goodwill the trolley coach has gained in every city where it is now used. In September of 1928, the first modern trolley coach went into regular service in Salt Lake City. Between then and 1934, including four of the leanest years in transit company history, nearly 500 more trolley coaches rolled into operation in 20 more cities, ranging in population from 40,000 to 7 million. In 1929, New Orleans, and a repeat order for Salt Lake City. In 1930, Chicago, Detroit, Knoxville, Brooklyn, Rockford, Illinois, and a repeat order for New Orleans. In 1931, Duluth, Memphis, Peoria, Pawtucket, and Shreveport. In 1932, Kenosha, Wisconsin, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, Indianapolis, Topeka, and St. Joseph. In 1933, Dayton, Columbus, and repeat orders for Pawtucket and Indianapolis. In 1934, Greensboro, North Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, repeat orders for Duluth and St. Joseph, and a second repeat order for Pawtucket. These cities represent all kinds of service, narrow streets, busy downtown districts, heavy grades, and severe winters. Under all these conditions, the trolley coach has maintained higher schedule speeds than either the streetcar or the gas bus. And in every city, trolley coach operation has resulted in a substantial and sustained increase in revenue. Say, look who's here. Some trolley coach operators. And they know it pays to keep abreast of the newest development. It's low operating costs and freedom from highway maintenance and its speed directed our course. And the result has justified our decision. Uh, what was that result economically? Did you find that these new vehicles brought you uh, increased patronage, riding, revenues? Well, I tell you, Jack, the, uh, in the first installation we made, the increase in revenue reached its peak in January of 1934, which was 46% over the rest of the... Uh, Pawtucket system, and 48% over the uh, Providence system. Hmm. 
Uh, since then, we have uh, put in two more trackless trolley lines. And in spite of continuous strikes since then, highway reconstruction and the like, they have shown very fine results. The uh, final result to us has been so assuring that we have taken the next step based upon one thing, and that is this, that the question that we have asked over a period of years has finally been answered, that there are passengers to be had if we give them the right vehicle. So, we bought some more trackless trolleys. Splendid. It is fear the trolley coach can serve a community far cheaper and better than any other vehicle so far developed. Its advantages are outstanding, but certainly of equal importance to the industry is the future energy cost to transport passengers, which at present is decidedly in favor of the electric coach in comparison with the gasoline bus. It is my conviction that we should give serious consideration to energy costs before abandoning our present central substation and distribution facilities and changing over to a different energy source that is subject to a wide variation in cost. Mr. Evans, uh, why did you put trolley coaches on Cleveland Avenue in Columbus? About a year ago, faced with a tremendous expenditure for the construction of new tracks, we decided to substitute and other form of transportation on that division. As power line operators, we naturally wanted to retain the electric load. But our investigations convinced us that the trolley coach had certain service features that would have an appeal to the public at large. Consequently, it was chosen for that service. Uh, you chose the 30-passenger coach. Uh, many other operators have used the 40-passenger size. Why did you uh, select that size of vehicle? The 30-passenger vehicle was chosen as an experiment. We believed a high frequency of service to have a very definite value. The results of our first nine months of operation seemed to support that contention, as our increase in patronage has greatly exceeded that anticipated. Future purchases for Columbus will consist of both 30s and 40s, as we are firmly convinced that both sides of the vehicles have a very definite place in the field. What results are you getting in Indianapolis from your new trackless trolleys? Well, you know, with the new trackless trolley, we found the big advantage there was the traffic appeal it had. We put the new streetcars in operation, new trackless trolley cars, and new metropolitan-type buses at the same time. We found we got a 25% increase in traffic with the trackless trolley car, and a 12% increase in traffic with the streetcar, and a 7% increase in traffic with the bus. So we came to the conclusion the people of Indianapolis preferred trackless trolley cars to anything else. Now, another thing we concluded, that the people of Indianapolis believed in getting the trackless trolley car that they were getting the most advanced type of operation that the industry could afford. That seemed to be the state of mind they were in, which was a splendid thing for us. And through their combination of quietude and pickup and delivery at the curb and smooth, speedy acceleration and uh, rapid transportation, why we got our traffic increase that we were looking for. Did you have any difficulty in uh, training your operators to handle the trackless trolley? No, that was a surprising thing to us. Uh, of course, the men were all trained in operating automobiles, and they were all trained in operating trolley cars. And they just naturally drifted into a skillful operation of the trackless trolley car without any difficulty. Well, that's fine. You have heard genuine expressions of trolley coach popularity, and here you see typical examples of the main reason. For comparison... Our graph is based on average revenue passengers each month in percent of January 1930. And in these terms, here is the revenue curve of the entire Shreveport system from then until 1933. While here is the revenue curve of Route A, until the trolley coach was placed in operation. Trolley coach Route A shows a sustained increase in revenue passengers of approximately 17% over the entire Shreveport system. Likewise, at Indianapolis, while revenues on all the rest of the system increased only 15%, those on the trolley coach line increased 58%. Here, in schedule speed, according to number of stops a mile, you see the main reason for such revenue increases. 
These graphs were developed from operating data of gas buses and trolley coaches of identical carrying capacity in three large cities. For example, with six stops a mile, the gas bus maintained a schedule speed of approximately 11.2 miles an hour, while that of the trolley coach was 14 miles an hour. The routes were as nearly comparable as possible, and the data covered a large number of trips in both base and rush hour service. Regardless of the number of stops a mile, you can see that the trolley coach consistently maintained 23 to 25 percent higher schedule speeds than the gas bus. There is one other aspect of trolley coach operation to be mentioned, and that is the trolley coach as an electric power load. Suppose we get the views of a power company executive about this important factor, Mr. Power Company. We believe that some form of public transportation will always be necessary, and we have watched our railway power load. The gradual falling off of this load has caused us some concern. Knowing the great favor the trolley coach has met from the public and several operating companies, we were glad when one of our traction company customers installed trolley coaches on one of its lines. Not only did the revenue passengers increase, but our power load was materially improved because one trolley coach uses about 100,000 kilowatt hours a year. So we encouraged the transit operators to adopt the trolley coach. I'm willing to predict that in due time, power companies will be welcoming this modern vehicle as a load builder, just as enthusiastically as traction companies welcome it as a revenue builder. Let's sum up the reasons why the public prefers this vehicle. Faster schedules, quieter operation, greater safety, absence of gas fumes, convenient seating, and better lighting and heating. It's excellent maneuverability, more power on hills, longer life, and availability for more revenue miles per year add to its popularity with operators. Let General Electric transportation engineers work with you to determine where on your system the trolley coach can be placed into revenue building service.